Welcome back, Gear Nerds. Today I am going to cover the exciting news that Eventide have released an iPad app to wirelessly control the H90. The H90 is an amazing bit of kit uh, with a huge number of effects, an enormous amount of power, but a tiny bit of a fiddly interface. So if like me, you've been working through the uh, button controls and the menu on the screen, which by the way, you can use, you're gonna be really pleased that Eventide have announced this beta version of the software for your iPad. So I'm going to go through now step-by-step step, every single thing you need to do to get the software up and running on your iPad. By the way, Android users, sorry, Okay, first thing we need to do is update the firmware on this little beast so that you've got Bluetooth. Let's switch over to the computer and do that now. So the first thing you need to do is download the H90 control software so that you can install the beta firmware. Go to the eventideaudio.com website, click support here at the top, this will take you to a section called Downloads. Select Pedals and there you have the H90. And from here you can download H90 Control for your operating system of choice. You need a minimum of version 1.7.1. Okay. Now, here's the process to update the firmware. One of the things that's slightly confusing about this is you would think you would press the connect button, but actually you don't. OK, let's go back a step. The first thing you need to do is power up your H90 uh, using any power supply that is appropriate. Uh, that's a pain, actually. I think it would be nice if it could be powered over USB, but anyway. So once you've connected up the power, you can connect a USB-C cable. In the guidance, it generally suggests don't go through a USB hub or anything like that, but uh, I'm connected via a hub and it's worked perfectly fine. But uh, as, uh, as they say on the internet, your mileage may vary. Now the thing you need to press to get the uh, firmware is this little cloud button um, and it goes ahead and it retrieves it. Now again not quite obvious but you need to select it there and it will give you the uh, release notes and then you press install. And there you have it. Just for information, this is the uh, screen that you see when you use the desktop editor. Now, there's a variety of feedback about this. It's a very comprehensive piece of software, but it's a little bit tricky to use sometimes. Uh, I can't do a whole review of the editing software. There's plenty of other, uh, other uh, videos that do this, but just I want you to note that the iPad app is an almost exact copy which in some ways, uh, the advantage here is excellent. You lose nothing, or it seems that you lose nothing by using the iPad. The downside is they haven't redesigned the interface for the touch interface versus uh, the computer interface. However, uh, that's a small problem. If you get used to the desktop, then you'll get used to the iPad uh, app in an instant. Let's go back to the H90 and see what we need to configure on there to connect our, our iPad. Okay, so next thing you need to do, go to the App Store. Search for Eventide H90. And you will find H90 Control. From here, you need to install it. Mine says open because, uh, of course, I have already uh, installed it. Well, in fact, so let's open it. 
Now at the moment, the default is that Bluetooth is not on on the H90. Okay, in order to connect, the first thing we need to do is turn on Bluetooth on the H90. The way to do that is hold down these two buttons to get into the system menu. And you'll see you've got a new menu item in the system menu that says Bluetooth. Select that. With the quick knob, you can then turn Bluetooth on and you can see the blue light comes on to indicate Bluetooth. Back to the iPad, you don't add device, which is a little bit counterintuitive. You tap the Bluetooth button and here it comes up. Now, here's the interesting part. Go back to the H90. It will give you the pass key on mine. One, seven, nine, nine, two, seven and hit pair. And good news. It says it's connected. Now we've got another blue light up here and I haven't read the documentation on this, but I think what it means is we've got an active connection. Now we still have one more step, which is we need to now add the device. And here it is in the menu. Now on mine, I've already added it. So now what we can do is tap connect, It goes, gets programs, gets the preset library. And here we are. Wow. Um, you can still control. Uh, you can still control the H90 and you can see there's two directional communication. So you see, I've just changed to a new program. Sorry, I'm an Andy Timmons fanboy. And uh, you can see exactly these things reflect each other. Uh, the other uh, thing to remember is that this is exactly the same as using the desktop software. So all of the foibles and slightly quirky way of doing the interface are the same. The other thing to note is when I change, you can see here, it's quite neatly done. Uh, as I slide my finger up and down. When I change these settings, I can't see anything happening on the screen of the H90. I'm not sure that's a big problem. You can see also, I can change programs from here. It takes a half a second to do it, uh, but uh, really very, very responsive and, uh, and positive. So there you go. As always, great to see your comments and questions down below. If you've got something useful out of this video, please click the like button. Please hit subscribe and the notification bell. And feel free to contribute to my coffee page. Many thanks to the subscribers who've already contributed. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. See you again next time.